Aloha guys, welcome to a, another encouraging time in God's scriptures today. We're going to be looking at the scriptures that comfort us if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling afraid. i got some really good words for you, for you from the Psalms. So grab your Bibles, turn to Psalm 23. I'm Pastor Izzy from Kona, Hawaii, and it's a privilege to be able to share God's word with you and find answers that we need to comfort our soul deep inside, those real deep things down that uh, we face. And Last week I asked where some of you are listening from. What a blessing, man. We have folks listening all the way from uh, from over in Sweden. Our friends Patrick and his wife and uh, uh, Felicia and, and uh, Christy and Scott Rose over there in uh, Nebraska. Our dear friends over in Kauai. Hi, you guys. Shout out to everyone. Thanks for, for watching and sharing because we got just from our little living room, um, I don't know, like... 1,300 views from the Resurrection Sunday, and I know we didn't have 1,300 people in my living room, so it's a privilege to be able to reach out beyond just uh, our little sphere here. But the early church did church in a home, just like we're doing now, so we're kind of returning to our roots, and I want, I want to really encourage you and get right into God's Word. So if you would, turn in your Bibles to Psalm 23. If you know anyone that's facing fears right now, feeling lonely, do me a favor, share this over to them. You can do it afterwards or do it now just so that they can participate, maybe have a watch party and uh, and just say, hey, check this out. This might be the, the word they need to hear today. I hope it is for you too. So let's look at Psalm 23. David, this is a psalm that the, the King David wrote when he was a young man. And he, if you don't know this, before he was king, he was actually a shepherd boy. And so this is a really endearing psalm, one I really appreciate because well, my middle name's David, so I always keyed in whenever something, uh, you know, was written about uh, King David or David when he fought Goliath with his sling. And I was like, man, that guy is, yeah, that's my kind of guy, you know. And, and, and yet he was not putting his confidence in himself. And I'm going to show you that today. Why did he have confidence to face giants like Goliath? Why did he, why was he able to wrestle the lion and the bear that attacked his flock? And he says he had he had to stand up for his flock as a shepherd. That's what a shepherd does. A shepherd guards his flock. And so David writes a psalm, only six verses long, one that has brought me great comfort. In fact, some of you, how many of you memorized the, this psalm, Psalm 23, all six verses? I mean, it's one of those, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to what? To lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside the, the still waters or the quiet waters in Hebrew. And he restores my soul. I know some of you are struggling. Your soul is not at peace. And uh, today is a great day to point you to the one that can bring your soul back into that place where it's restored. And, and it's just where it needs to be. Because that's what the good shepherd does. Now David's saying he's not the good shepherd. He's saying the Lord is the good shepherd. And he's the one that restores my soul. He goes on and he says then he guides me. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. He shows us. He leads us in this world into those right ways that we ought to go. And I'm so grateful for that because sometimes we don't know what to do. We don't know which way that, that path is going to lead. And we can go to him and he, just like a good shepherd, will lead us in the right path for his namesake. And now comes the verse that has got me through so many things. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I will fear no evil or no, no harm in Hebrew. Why? For thou art with me. Now, if you're facing loneliness right now or you're facing things that you're afraid of, this is one part you need to learn. I mean, I hope I can share this in the most clearest way that we sometimes forget the Lord is with us. He literally goes with us wherever we go. And some people say, not me. He's not with me. Well, ask him. You know, Jesus says he stands at the door and knocks, and if any man opens the door of his heart, he will come in and be with him. He'll sup with you. He'll stay with you. And having Jesus as the good shepherd, the big, I mean, the, the greatest person that could protect you from harm, that's what a shepherd does for a sheep. He protects his sheep. He leads them. He guides them. He brings them to the, the place of calm, still water, where you can, your soul can be restored. And he's, and he's there to look after you. Now, you say, why is this so comforting? I mean, well, I remember when I was young, I was a little punk. And, uh, and and not only was I little, I was, when I say a punk, I was a little squirt. I mean, I, I was the smallest kid in my high school when I started. And, uh, you know, all 
four foot seven and a quarter inches, and I, I graduated like four foot seven and three quarters. Like we were like half an inch in all three years of high school. And I managed to go from like, you know, 72 pounds to 80 pounds or something. I was the smallest guy when I started high school. And even you, when you're the smallest person in your high school, you know what happens to you? You get picked on. People just love to pick on the little guy. And so I was always constantly picked on. And I learned to, you know, kind of fight back and that's probably not so good but the lord um the lord had to teach me some things and when i was even younger in before high school days i was still a run and i remember playing out in the street in front of our house and my uncle joe um my dad's younger brother who was actually bigger and stronger looked like a linebacker uh, or one of those big bouncer guys he was my godfather and uh he was sitting on the front porch with, with my dad and they were looking at us playing in the street, and and I thought, I, I, I don't really have to worry if my friends pick on me right now because, see, my godfather's right over there, and he's a big guy, and he, he like, he's guarding over me. In fact, he, he came out from the porch when he saw me in trouble and just walked toward the street, and the other kids backed away. I was like, that's who's watching out for me. That's my godfather, you know? And then he said, let's go for a walk down the street, and I course man and walk with him down the street and you know it's kind of cool because all of a sudden from being afraid of all those bullies on the street i didn't have to be afraid of nobody i was walking down the street like i got i got my godfather with me here and you know he's he's a big guy and i like big and i i'm like nobody's gonna mess with me now because they don't want to mess with him now you say why would i tell you that story because the thing the bible says unless you become like a child you really don't receive the things of the kingdom of heaven. You can hear about God's word and, you know, someone will be telling you, this is really important for you. And, and you go, yeah, I don't need that. I, that doesn't work. And, but if I tell a kid that, that the good Lord is the one looking over them, and he's bigger than my Uncle Joe, and he's got more power, and he's, well, like, if he's walking down the street with you, do you have to worry? The Bible says that the Lord is for you, who can be what? against you you have the biggest good shepherd watching over you and we forget and sometimes we just need to be reminded like a kid hey don't forget the lord is watching over you he is looking and he is guarding over you like a good shepherd and and david wrote these words he says i i fear no harm no evil for thou art with me he says thy rod and thy staff they comfort me now you guys know what a rod is for? A she You've seen the shepherd with his staff and his rod. And what does he do with those things? That 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 staff with a hook on it, you know? He, a sheep starts to wander off the wrong way. What's he do with the hook? Reaches out around his neck. Whoop, you, back into the fold, you know? Get back, get back where... By the way, if you know anything about how wolves attack sheep, they never attack the whole flock. They wait for one of the sheep to what? wander slightly away and then they get it a little you know if they can get it off to the side and and just kind of spook it and get it further away from the flock then they get it all alone once they get it alone that's when they that's when they pounce they don't pounce when the sheep are together in the flock some people say why should i even go to church when should i be together with other believers because we're sheep the bible says we are just the sheep of his hand he's the good shepherd and when you're together with other sheep, guess what? Spiritually, there's safety for you. There's a there's a protection that the enemy doesn't get to attack you like he would like. He, he'd like to get you all alone and make you feel like, you know, there's no one to watch you over you. You're in trouble now. I can get you. I can bounce on you. But don't forget, the good shepherd's always with you. This is where you could be like I was when I was little. I only had one big guy with me on the street. Just happened to be one big guy who liked me and looked after me. And if you have, if you know that the Lord is like that for you, how do you feel when you walk down the street? This is, by the way, really a, a really solid strengthening. And, and, and it actually changes your outlook. Because before I knew this, I didn't, I, I could feel lonely even when I was with a whole bunch of people. Have you ever felt lonely in a crowd? I did, I did a, a thing with the youth group one time. We were talking about it, and the kids made a YouTube video about it. 
And that thing, I mean, I couldn't believe so many people watched it. And I was explaining from this scripture that, you know, I don't really have to feel lonely when I know the Lord's with me. Even when I'm all by myself. Because I'm not, I don't feel this emptiness. Like before the... Before I knew that the Lord was with me, I felt if I was alone, it was kind of empty feeling. I got to go find someone to hang out with. I got to, you know, it's almost uncomfortable feeling to me. Once I came to know that the Lord was with me, and I didn't have to be afraid because He's the one looking after me, man, it didn't matter where I was, even if I was all isolated by myself. And right now, how many people do you know that are isolated because of this virus and they're stuck in their apartment or in their place and they're just, they're feeling like, oh man scared i want to give him words of comfort from this from the psalms here one of the greatest comforts the lord's looking after you and he's going to guide you in the right path in your life you don't have to be afraid in fact verse 5 says thou dost prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies and thou has anointed my head with oil my cup overflows he's saying lord even with in the face of my enemies you took care of me. You prepared a table for me. I mean, you, you didn't say run, hide in a cave. You just set out a meal for me. Here, eat. Now, if you can sit in front of your enemies and eat your, eat your meal that the Lord prepared for you, what's it say about how you feel? It would be like me sitting there and eating with my uncle watching me, thinking, nobody's going to steal my lunch. Nobody's going to mess with me because why? I got somebody looking after you. Don't forget the good Lord is looking after you. He says, and I just love this because sometimes we, we have these things, we, we feel these ways and, and, you know, the Spirit of God is so good. He'll use different pastors to speak into your life. Some people tell me they've been scrolling through and hearing different pastors from different feeds and, and, and it's just amazing. One of them, you, you teach on it and then they go to another pastor and another pastor is teaching on the very same thing. Pastor Vince Harmon today was given his word of encouragement just before I came on, and it was the it was the psalm, Jesus right? The, the Jesus, the good shepherd. And I thought, what, did he cheat on my, look at my notes? I know he didn't because he taught before me. He's over there in, in, in Christ Church Lutheran in Yuma. And uh, thanks, Vince, by the way, for that. Uh, it's encouraging, you know. And here, listen to the last, the last verse of this psalm. I, I, I want to get this in today. He says, surely goodness and mercy or loving kindness another translation says will follow me how long all the days of my life and ultimately the end of the psalm some of you know the last line and i will dwell where in the house, in the house of the lord forever you know when everything gets a little weird down here we have to we have to really go zoom into this psalm and see what's the end game what's the What's the great hope we have as Christians? Jesus said, guys, don't be afraid that I'm leaving when he was being taken up into heaven. He says, I, I go to my father's house. I prepare a place for you. And if I prepare a place for you, I'll come again to receive you to myself. And so he promised when some people said, where do you think that idea? Jesus coming again. I said, from Jesus. I got it on good authority. He said, I'm going to make a place for you in my father's house. There's many mansions and I'll be back. And that, so that where I am, he says, you may be also. And David knew this. He says, in the end, I get to dwell where? In the house of the Lord forever. I mean, this isn't a new teaching. I hope, you know, some people are like, where'd you get that? I'm like, man, that's way back in the Psalms. David said, he's going to dwell in the house of the Lord. Did you know that? Someday you're going to dwell with the Lord in his house forever. And I mean, and he's got many mansions there. I, I look so forward to seeing what Jesus can do. Anyone else excited about this? This is something to really look forward to. I just, I give thanks that he does this. But you know, we just sometimes need to be reassured. The Good Shepherd is watching over. us. And, and, and you know, I mean, it, it, it's so simple. When I was a kid, I used to sing, he's got the whole world in his hands, he's got the whole wide world. You guys know that song, right? In his hand. And you think, well, what's the big deal about that? He's got you and me, brother, where? In his hands. He's looking out over. that. Just that song as a kid made me think, you got this all. You're, co you're, you're watching over all of us. Don't forget that. And if that, you know, you just need a reminder, you're feeling 
Wow, Lord, I don't know if, if you're there. I don't know what's going on. Go back and reread Psalm 23. Let it speak to your heart. Let it bring you comfort. Let it give you those words of encouragement. And there's so many other places in scriptures where guys have been afraid. I'm thinking of doing a little bit more in-depth study next week from the book of Kings when the great prophet Elijah was afraid and felt really alone. He thought he was the only one left serving the Lord and the kingdom. And God, God has a word for him about that. But God also saw that that loneliness that he felt led him into a great depression. And if you ever struggle with depression, I want you to know you're not alone. You're not the only one that goes through it. And next week, I, I'll go, I think I will. I'll do that story for you next week for those that are struggling with depression. And I'll use the great prophet Elijah to show you God's remedy and something you can do to help your friends if they're struggling with it too, that we can get them a little bit of hope, a little bit of encouragement. And, uh, and I look forward to doing that with you next week. So if you would come back, join us here at the same time, same bat channel. You know, next week at 1030 uh, Hawaii Standard Time, whatever time that is for you, wherever you are in the world, I'm thankful that you're joining us. And um, if you don't mind sharing it for me, we want to see how many people we can reach. We want to reach as many folks with the encouragement that the scriptures bring us. And uh, even though we're just a little fellowship here in my house right now, we know that God's word is not held back just by these walls. The early church was just little people going from house to house gathering maybe god's just pushing us back into the early model because that model got the word spread all around the world and so we're seeing some great fruit we saw greg Laurie's ministry the harvest crusades touch more people than it ever has and i just rejoice and how many of you rejoice for that Thirty-one thousand souls got saved on resurrection sunday from the preaching of the word and i think yes that's great i mean i'm just excited we had over 1500 views on that resurrection sunday of our sermon he had 1,100,000 that day. And I just think, that's so awesome, man. I love it. Thank you, Lord. And I hope you love it when, uh, don't ever go, oh, that, that preacher, I, I wouldn't want him to have any success. You know, I want every preacher to have success sharing the word. Because I know that every, that's all the souls that get encouraged and need to be encouraged. And that's my, that's my job is to encourage you in your faith. That's what I do. I, I try to encourage you and show you the things from his scriptures that, you know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God wants people to hear his word. So so don't don't poo-paw somebody else's ministry because they share in a different way or they maybe they're reaching to other people. Praise God. Someone shared a link about, it was a rap about uh, how Christ finished the work on the cross and attached it to my, to my, uh, my seven final words of, uh, on, on the cross video that we did a few weeks back. I'm like, this is great. You know, it's not my style, but it might reach somebody else that I don't. And that I want. I want as many souls to be encouraged and touched in the Lord. So if you're blessed by this, do me a favor. Share it to somebody. We got over 100 shares last week, and that's pretty good for us. It makes me really excited. I did a lot of them, so, you know, thank you for all the rest of you that helped me out in that. But um, I'm trying to share it to as many of my buddies to, to let them know, hey, just keep soldiering on. Keep hanging in there. Know who's watching over you. The good shepherd watches over you. So be blessed with that knowledge. Reread Psalm 23 today, and if you get a chance, read 1 Kings 19 for, chat, for, for next week's sermon, and we'll be back to encourage you in, in God's Word some more. So, Blessings to you. I'll try to post more links to our YouTubes that the kids have made and uh, from when we were on the beach. They're just more in-depth studies for those that need a little bit more meat and, and want to get into it. Just go over. You can check it out. Uh, I'll put the link in the description after I'm all done. It's AmazingGraceKona.com. It's easy to remember. Amazing Grace, and we're in Kona. AmazingGraceKona.com if you'd go there. And thanks to all you guys that have given and supported us because our little tithe box over there doesn't really fill up in the home church, so we're <laughs> super grateful for your support from you guys online. I see some pastors ask for money. I can't. If you know me, I don't do that. I just say there's a box. But um, well, now there's a virtual box. You can go. You can go to our Amazing Grace site, and it says donate, and it goes through PayPal. So uh, thank you to the sister that made me do that, and you know who you are, and uh, <laughs> and I really appreciate it because that has supplied some of our needs, and so. Please um, be blessed in the Lord, and may he supply all your needs. Don't forget, he's the good shepherd. May he lead you and guide you. Have a blessed week. Aloha.